back on the record, um, Ms. Tobin, it's up to you if you want to come to council table, stand back there wherever you want to be. I'm going to have appearances made because I did an intervening case. Joel Stokes versus Bank of America, pages 1 and 2, 720032. This was supposed to be the 830. It's now 850. Um, while the court understands that around 820-ish, within a few moments here or there, somewhere between 820 and 824, I guess there was a call by plaintiff's counsel that he was running late, just, but no estimation of time. As you see, I've got a courtroom full of people for a trial that's starting. Today is the first day of trial, even though it's CV, we're doing 100, I said 110, I guess it's really 115 motions. Um, so we can't keep them waiting. We know when we set this, everyone was here. It was under a specific agreement. Everyone would make sure they were on time. We've waited 20 minutes. Council, can I have your appearances? Or anybody who's presently here? And maybe I've paused enough that looks like somebody's coming. Okay. Well, Everyone needs your appearances. Sharp. I know. We've got nine minutes. we got nine minutes for this case. It was 8.30 sharp. Everyone had to be here. I've got a courtroom full. It was a CD special, special setting on a CD case. Can I have appearances, please, on Stokes? Mike Mushkin on behalf of the trust. Donald A. Ford, Defendant Nation Star. David Ochoa for Sun City Inc. Okay, so we're going to have about eight minutes because we waited. Everyone knew we had a CD. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't know I was appearing on behalf of Mr. Coppage. I got caught in traffic. Right. I appreciate Mr. Coppage was here and there was this specific agreement. Everyone had to be here before 8.30, ready to go at 8.30 because of doing the special setting to accommodate you all were the ones that filed the incredibly late motions for the trial starting on June 5th. But... So the first question the court has is, is Ms. Tobin anywhere in this case as an individual currently? It, the court did not see it by looking at either this case or the consolidated 16 case. It got consolidated into this case. I'm calling this case as the 15 case. It started in 2015 and it was the 16, 2016 case that was consolidated into this case. The issue was raised in the briefing. It had also previously been raised, but your counsel, is there any place at all that you see Ms. Tobin in any individual capacity in this case whatsoever? And the reason why I have to ask that question is because I have to know who's speaking. Your Honor, my understanding coming here today is that I was here to appear on a motion to withdraw. The motion to reconsider was to be heard by or argued by Ms. Tobin, who is now representing herself. That's I was on correct. That's why I, I need I to I understand. Ask. Yeah. And so my understanding is that, yes, she was named individually. Where? I, you, I don't have the entire file in front of me, Judge. I was not prepared to answer that question. Okay. That's a question that's... And the motion that you've seen is to substitute the real party of interest because there was a quick claim deed file that we learned about 12, 14 days ago. Which raises a whole bunch of different issues, but exactly. the court has to do this step by step. Okay, so I'm going to go to the TRIO table. Bank, third party, HOA. Okay. You all had previously said at a prior hearing that Ms. Tobin was not in the case. At that hearing, you had the court go and look. You raised it, Council for Stokes, you raised it in your opposition. You raised the order from 2016 on the motion to intervene. Is anyone aware of any place in this case or the consolidated case that Ms. Tobin anywhere is an individual? I appreciate that some captioning has happened that way. I'm trying to look at the case itself. No, no, Your Honor. Ms. Tobin has never been in this case individually. What is for my opposition, my client's opposition, it was just an ambiguous caption when the Tobin trustee captioned it, known as Tobin, an individual and trustee. So she's never been. And I attached a copy of the underlying motion to intervene, which was as the trustee, and the order, which was as the trustee. That's it. And that makes sense because uh, Ms. Tobin would, ne would never have standing individually because the trust, the Hanson Trust, was the owner at the time of the HOA foreclosure sale. I agree, Your Honor, I'm not aware of any other. Yeah. Okay. 
And since there's three of you all, um, once again, can we just make sure it's mentioned? Just David Ochoa for Sunny Anthem. I, I agree with that representation, Your Honor. I'm not aware of any place that she appears as an individual. We thought you would appreciate scheduling this on the same day. Um, okay, Councilor Bank. Sure, Your Honor. I was just going to add that we had this issue looked at closely a while back. We had when we had to amend the caption, and all parties agree that the parties in the case caption are the parties that are represented, and the trust was the proper party to be. Um, so the reason why the court had to go through that first preliminary, and that's why I was asking his counsel, if there's something that's missed, I, I you know, no one's perfect. Did look at the 15 case, the 16 case, because it was raised in the plea, so it's appropriate for the court. Well, not only we got to make sure we have the right parties anyway, so esponte, but it was specifically re-raised again. The court read the order. It's attached um, to the opposition. I was just grabbing it. Um, so. The order back in 2016, while was here by order to create the applicant's motion, okay, was as the trustee, okay, and it's even signed and submitted by now. At that juncture, unfortunately, the issue of who was the proper party was Tobin while she filed the pleading says, respectfully submitted, Nona Tobin trustee, Gordon B. Hanson trust, dated 8-22-08. The motion was to intervene as trustee. The order was only as intervening as trustee. So if the court is going to order stricken anywhere in the record that shows as of this moment, prior to any pleading process that may be happening in the motion practice, that, and this is why we talked about, and this is why the court struck back in April when there was pleadings filed by Ms. Tobin is because there was nothing showing that Ms. Tobin herself was a party in this case, which is why some pleadings were stricken when they were filed by Ms. Tobin back in April. So consistent with that, just no one has demonstrated that Ms. Tobin is a individual party in this case. The motion to intervene was on behalf of Ms. Tobin as trustee of the Gordon B. Hansen Trust dated um, 8 2208 is the way that order read back in 2000, motion filed 2016, order filed January 11, 2017, NEO filed January 12, 2017. Okay, so that being the case, there is the next issue raised in the pleadings is that there was motions, and this has been Previously raised and discussed at prior hearings, Mr. Mushkin, I'm just repeating a couple things because you don't have the benefit of being here at some prior ones, okay, so I'm reiterating some things. When I said a moment ago the reason why the court had to strike, I'm sure you realize April, that means things that were filed by somebody who's not a party can't be considered by the court, okay, which raises some of the pleadings that are set for today, okay, two different issues. So the next question this court has, and in reading through everything in the various motion practice, is the reason why the court was first going to address, as I said, the motion for reconsideration, is because the motion for reconsideration would address who the parties are in here, and part of that motion for reconsideration addresses the underlying issue as to you all should feel free to sit down, stand up, and just come to the point. You know, I say that all the time, but um, is addresses the underlying issue with respect to who is the real party in interest, who has standing, and the additional issue raised in the pleadings is some of these newest documents filed in the 2019 time frame mention a whole different trust name. Okay, which is a different issue because the motion was granted in 2016 for the, and that's why I was trying to be very clear, what was represented to be the Gordon B. Hansen Trust dated 8-2208. There is new pleadings filed that say Gordon B. Hansen Trust dated 8-2208 with an amendment or revision in 2011. So that makes a difference, as we all know, under trust law, right? is that a separate trust 
Is it a fully revised trust? Is it an amended trust? It also may or may not make a difference as to who are the beneficiaries. The court does not have the benefit of that information, which was another question this court was going to ask, because separate and apart from the fact there was an untimely supplement which is unauthenticated that was filed in this case, which the court may or may not be even able to consider, but going beyond that, even if the court were to potentially consider what you referenced, found out 14 days ago, presumably you're talking about a quick claim deed that was filed in a supplement untimely. It can't file supplements without court permission, after, particularly after oppositions, particularly when there's OST dates with specific dates filed. That being a separate and distinct other issue. Well, the date of 2017 with an operative foreclosure in 2014 and a case filed in 2015 and the second case consolidated in 2016 presents its own other unique challenges which I had not yet gotten to. That's, but you're absolutely correct, Judge. That hadn't even gotten to that one yet. I was really going on pure nomenclature because going back to the order and going back to the motion to intervene, when you go back to those documents, specifically raised in the opposition, and I've only got a moment here because you know where this is going, right, is in those underlying documents when that motion to intervene was first filed, two beneficiaries specifically stated in the affidavit, Hanson's son and Miss Tobin. So the court then was going to, even if I could consider a potential quick claim deed from a trustee to one of the beneficiaries of a different trust named than the trust that originally came into this case in 2016, there would be a question about how a trustee could transfer a quick claim deed to only one of two beneficiaries when the two beneficiaries under a prior pleading are stating that there's two beneficiaries. So whether the court could even A, consider that because it's a timeliness issue, B, the inconsistencies with prior pleadings submitted in this court and what this court should be considering anyway. Um, that would be part of the questions that this court was going to have before I could even, that's why I was going to have to address the motion for reconsideration first, because I can't consider a motion to withdraw to replace a individual, while well, you potentially could withdraw, you have an EDCR 7.42 problem because until the issue of the trust is resolved, there would be no representation the court has to take into consideration with any motion to withdraw. You are set for trial, as you know, June 5th. So the court has to take into consideration with regards to any motion to withdraw and a calendar call of June 3rd, and that June 3rd was only to accommodate two days. And while I appreciate I had the other trial, everybody knew this was going to get sent to overflow, and so it still was going to go forward, so that's not an issue here. But, as you know, counsel issue on withdrawing if it's going to impact a case and impact a trial and doing all those other things that the court has to consider on a withdrawal. And that's how the court can grant a withdrawal when there is a trust which has to be represented in the EDCR 7.42 with a calendar call on June 3rd and a trial on June 5th presents other challenges that this court was going to have to ask. I can't ask. It's now after the 9 o'clock hour, and I think you're going to tell me, Mr. M well, Mr. Mushkin, do you know the answer to all those questions that the court was going to have to ask before I even got to the motions themselves? No, Your Honor, I do not. Because you said you were filling in for somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Which... That presents the challenge. So it seems to me from today's purpose, I cannot, the motion for reconsideration was filed by Ms. Tobin. Let me make sure I am. My recollection, because there was a variety, because you raised in your opposition the reply should be stricken because it was not filed. Right. But I have to go back to the underlying motion. Um, Consideration without even taking into account whether or not the motion for reconsideration was filed by your firm as attorney for Nona Tobin, an individual, and as trustee of the Gordon B. Hanson Trust. But once again, the trust. It's unclear because there's a 2008 and then it says it's also 2011 revised, so I only have the same trust number. So it's your motion.
counsel, that's why I have to address this first. I, what's your position on whether or not I can even address any of these? Your Honor, I believe that there is but one trust, even though there might be an amendment to the trust. The court's inquiry is proper, but I think that the party as a trust is proper. There aren't two trusts. Okay. So to that extent, I don't think that's a, 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 an issue that stops us. The motion to reconsider is lengthy, and the court can address it as it sees fit. But you told me you weren't prepared to argue it today because you were, right? I've read it. I just don't have the background in the case, and frankly, Your Honor, um, I'm not sure I'm the proper person to argue it, given that the quick claim deed, whatever interest that may have existed in the trust is now transferred. Um, the individual before you that claims ownership, the real party of interest, is here. So I, I'll do whatever the court wants, including submit it on the pleadings. Well, I'm sure you can appreciate that I... Questions in the underlying trust have to be answered, but they not. Because you may or may not recall that if you look into this case historically, this case initially, the inter first intervention motion included two parties, Ms. Tobin and Mr. Hansen, the son, not the deceased Mr. Hansen. I understand. And then there was an unauthenticated document that there was a new motion that came before the court. And so when the court's looking at the record, it says two, Benny, two beneficiaries. And yet a 2017 transfer in the name of only one beneficiary with no trust document to support that the trustee can do that. There's nothing that's been provided to this court that gives any of that background or information. So how can this court... Move and nothing forward? was provided to us, Judge. The only thing that I would suggest is if you'd like us to um, supplement the pleadings, we can do that, and then the court can rule. How do I do that when I have a trial? Your separate trial next week, folks. That's, that was the challenge of the timing of all this as well, right? Because you all did the OST and you did what you did when you did it, which I appreciate your filling in today, which is why I'm trying to do My, it. Our problem, Judge, is we didn't know of the transfer. Well, that's a, that I can't transfer. go to attorney-client communications, as you know, and so that's why I'm stopping you, right? No, no, I'm, but we have to disclose to the court what we know and what we don't know. We'll Thus, we're in that position that we had to file the motion to withdraw. So, we'll do what the court instructs. I'm going to hear you all's position, but I will tell you, um, this is, seems like I'm going to hear this at the calendar call, and then everyone has to be prepared for trial to start two days later, and I'm going to have to get this transferred to a different department. Counsel? Sure, Your Honor, Don Woody for Nation Star. Um, Nation Star has a limited interest in that reconsideration motion. Our interest is that there is a tender. We believe that preserved the need of trust. So, as far as the HOA and um, the Tobin Trust individual, whatever that is, um, our position is, again, what was in our limited joint in that motion. That being said, um, just looking at the reconsideration motion, it sounds like they haven't met their burden in seeking reconsideration and convincing the court that um, they even have standing to bring that. And so on that basis, it could result in a denial. Sun City, it's your opposition because it was your motion for summary judgment that got granted. Go ahead, counsel. We are in opposition right now, Your Honor. I'm asking what the parties are asking this court to do in light of all these issues that you all raised in your various pleadings, which is why the court had to give a long introduction. We believe that the, the trust is the proper party, and that's who she proceeded as. That's, I think, what the order is against, and um, we believe you should deny the motion for reconsideration. Uh, yes, Your Honor, Joseph Hunt for the Stokes Party. We filed a jointer to that, and we agree the uh, motion for reconsideration should be denied, but the has not been met. So, counsel, I guess I'm going to, sorry for Sunday, I'm going to take five minutes. i got to deal with this motion for reconsideration because they're set for trial, too, and sorry, as you know, we were here ready to go. So I guess I'll hear the motion for reconsideration. You all teed it up for today. I signed the OST. Um, your counsel, I can't address the withdrawal aspect when I don't have anything that shows that a trust and I said I told everyone I was doing the motion for reconsideration first anyway um, when this hearing got set so motion for reconsideration if you wish to argue it you can argue it 
Mr. Mushkin, if you wish to submit on the papers, you can submit on the papers. If you wish Your to Honor. know the court's inclination, I can tell you all the court's inclination on the motion for reconsideration. What would you like? We'd certainly like to hear the court's inclination. The court's inclination is I need to deny it. I need to deny it for two different bases, both procedurally, when you look at a motion for reconsideration, you have an evidentiary burden to show that there's new facts, laws, etc. after reading the totality of the motion, even in the most generous sense and taking into account the reply as well, subject to the motion to strike, but even taking into account the totality of all the pleadings presented to this court. The court doesn't see that there's any new facts, any new law, any new error by this court, so look at it procedurally. Then if the court were to go past that first aspect of a motion for reconsideration, and its inclination then would be looking at even substantively taking the totality and then even going through this entire case, doesn't see that the parties that have raised the issues meet for independent reasons. Um, you could go simply to the prior emails from Ms. Tobin submitted um, where she says that she pretty much just wanted a finder's fee afterwards. Okay, I think those are some September 2014 emails that were attached to prior motions, even not even taking into that. So giving the benefit of the doubt of looking at the totality of everything to see if there was some basis, it would be no. Not taking the totality, only going on the specific pleadings in the motion for reconsideration and everything is attached in the 500 page plus pages, right? And not even taking into account the fact that much of it's unauthenticated so the court shouldn't consider it, but even giving the full benefit of the doubt if it could consider everything. So procedurally, can't consider a lot of it because it's not authenticated, no affidavit, can't consider it, okay? But even if I, reading every single thing and the benefit in the most light, most favorable to the party moving for reconsideration, ignoring those procedural things, looking at it substantively, it doesn't meet the burden and the court would reaffirm. That's the court's inclination. Submitted, Your Honor. Does anyone want to be heard on this side? Nothing no. further information, sir. Okay, well there's being nothing further than the court's going to turn its inclination into an order, so the motion for reconsideration is denied. Counsel, what do you want me to do about the motion to withdraw and one of the questions about proper party? Um, we'll take it off calendar, Judge. I, you're not going to grant it, it's too close to trial anyway. Okay, motion to withdraw is taken off calendar, the court need that rule. Thank you so very much. We'll see you at the calendar call, folks, whoever's left in the case. Thank you, Your Honor. Make sure you get me an order, right, with an NEO, otherwise you're showing up to calendar call. Okay. Thank you so much. Sorry for the inconvenience on Sun City Anthem. Um, Sun City Anthem, pages one through nine.